Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Urshan. And it's almost Halloween, folks. Everyone's entitled to one good scare. We're going to celebrate Halloween this week by celebrating the year 1981, the seminal year of the slasher genre. That's right, the slasher boom was at its peak in 1981. And of course, 1980 was also a big year where you had the original Friday the 13th, you had Maniac, you had Prom Night, you had Terror Train. So yes, 1980 was a big year, but I think 1981 was even bigger where you had two classic sequels to two of the most classic seminal franchises in slasher history. And that is Friday the 13th Part 2, which is my favorite entry in the franchise outside of the original film. And also you had the great Halloween 2, of course, uh, which is my personal favorite horror sequel of all time. And, uh, of course, you had a lot of one-offs that year. A lot of uh, holiday-themed uh, or just special occasion movies, which is always a great uh, setting for a slasher film. Uh, you had films like Happy Birthday to Me. You had Graduation Day. And, of course, you had My Bloody Valentine, which is probably the most famous slasher film to never have a sequel. Uh, you had that iconic look of a slasher villain, which I love in My Bloody Valentine. You had that, you know, the killer miner outfit, where he had the uh, gas mask and the pickaxe. It's just a cool look, and it's such a great slasher film, uh, with all kinds of nasty uh, gore effects, which you see even more in the un uncut version. I know when they came out with the original theatrical version, they cut out a lot of the gore scenes, but... You can get it on DVD uncut. Um, also, you had, of course, The Burning, which is just an awesome slasher film, which I'm kind of embarrassed I never saw until a couple of years ago. So, boy, was I missing out. Um, because it's such a great slasher film. You had uh, Fisher Stevens from the Short Circuit films. You had Jason Alexander from Seinfeld fame. And, of course, you had the lovely Holly Hunter. Um... You also had another crop of great slasher movies. You had uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. You had Hell Knight starring the lovely Linda Blair. You had Just Before Dawn. Uh, so, so many classic uh, slasher films. Uh, graduation Day again, uh, like I said, is a great setting. You had Graduation Day and you have this psychotic maniac on the loose. Uh, you had The Nightmare, which is a real uh, sleazy slasher film where it takes place in that dark underbelly of New York City uh, at that time, which was, you know, all this underground sex stuff going on, and you have this maniac on the loose who's a, a mental patient, you know? So it makes for some brutal gore effects. Uh, also, you had The Prowler, of course. Uh, so, like I said, big year for Tom Savini. The Prowler, he had another awesome-looking slasher killer uh, that that uh, World War II veteran outfit uh, with the with a helmet and the uh, camouflage mask. You can't see his face. He had the pitchfork and a nasty scene there with the pitchfork with that girl in the shower. Ooh. And then you see the knife go through that dude's head and it comes out his chin. Ooh. Some nasty scenes in that film. And uh, some real good tension in the film too. Some real great chase scenes and all. Uh, it's thrilling. And of course, so we're going to talk about, of course, Friday the 13th, Part 2. So let's talk a little bit about that one, which I think is a classic. And uh, so this time out, you had Jason Voorhees, the son of Pamela Voorhees from the original film. Uh, so we found out, spoiler alert, that uh, Pamela Voorhees was the killer. And uh, the reason she was killing people is because her young son Jason drowned at Camp Crystal Lake and none of those counselors were paying any attention while that young boy drowned so she took her revenge on anyone who dare return to Camp Crystal Lake. Uh, so in the sequel you had Jason Voorhees come into play and he was the killer this time around 
and he had the really cool look about him too which was very scary I thought and you had that a uh, real inbred hillbilly look where he had the potato sack mask, you know, and the little circle uh, cut out in the, um, you just see his eyeball. And then you had the, he had the coveralls, you know. <laughs> and uh, some really scary stuff in this film. I think the first two films is where they were scary, you know. They actually cared about scaring the viewer. Uh, after these, you know, they kind of went a little campy and, you know, it was just about the gore and the kill scenes, but this one had real tension in it. And you had a great final girl in Ginny, played by Amy Steele. And I, I just love that ending scene with the chase and uh, the showdown between Ginny and Jason uh, at, in his little uh, house there, the hole in the wall. <laughs> and I love how you have that, uh, he had his mother laid out her her severed head laid out on like a shrine with candles and the sweater and uh, we found out earlier in the film that she uses a little bit of that child psychology she went to school for and she uses that against Jason which I love she puts on the sweater and pretends to be Pamela and she's like come Jason come kneel down that's a good Jason uh, so I like that battle of wits with the madman Jason Voorhees and of course, as soon as he lets his guard down, she swings the machete at him. <laughs> it's classic, I love it. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Halloween 2, of course, which, as I said many times, I absolutely love this film. I think it's a perfect sequel. Um, and I'm not going to say, oh yeah, it's better than the original, which some people would do actually say, but I will say this is my favorite horror sequel. It's just everything you would want in the sequel. Um, you had the returning cast, you had Donald Pleasance returning as Dr. Loomis, you had Jamie Lee Curtis returning as Laurie Strode, you had Charles Cyphers returning as Sheriff Lee Brackett, and you even had Nancy Stevens returning as Marion Chambers. Um, I just think there's brilliance in uh, Halloween 2, which some people miss out on. You got wonderful tension-filled uh, scenes, like the scene where uh, Michael is chasing Lori, and uh, she reaches an elevator, and she's pounding on that button, trying to get that door to open. <laughs> and you see Michael slowly stalking towards her, and you see that red light shining off Michael's mask. It looks so cool. And uh, you see him stepping on the glass that close up, and it's just the tension. You can just cut it with a knife. I love it. And uh, there's that scene, of course, that iconic scene we all know where Michael gets his eyes shot out and uh, the blood pours from his eyes and it looks like blood tears and he goes like that, you know. How classic and iconic is that? There's just so many great scenes that are, are some of the most talked about and uh, some of the most remembered images from the Halloween franchise in part two. So part two is just amazing. Uh, and I love that it follows the original very faithfully and uh, actually continues right from it literally. And uh, they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to follow the original exactly like that, but they did. But at the same time, they put their own stamp and their own flavor uh, and their own suspense and imagery into part two. So there's enough to separate. It also has the gore showing in this film where the original you didn't see the blood, but this one you see the blood. It doesn't skimp out. Uh, so there's just so much to love about Halloween too. So that's my favorite film of the 1981 slasher boom. Um, but yeah, just check out all these great classics of the slasher genre of 1981. What's your favorite 1981 slasher film, folks? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan, in the Horror Quarter. Tune in and stay scared.